social transformation. Um, a very difficult uh, thing to undertake. And I mean, in the context of what we uh, call a sort of conscious capital in particular, because as we all know, transformation, system transformations happen on a continuous basis. Day to day, there is change. That's quite normal. There's nothing you have to do about that. But fundamental uh, rebooting of a system or uh, fundamental system change is not something that is normally even contemplated. And to consciously, deliberately bring about such a change is, 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 is difficult to uh, contemplate. Now, first of all, at the demand and why do we need transformation? Yeah. It's not just uh, about uh, non-renewable resources and we know the, the idea of uh, pick everything. And that includes, of course, peak pollution, but it's also renewable resources because there is a limited renewal rate, rate of renewal, so we're also exceeding uh, that renewal rate. Yeah. And as a consequence, we have biosphere destruction, we have climate change, and at the same time, growing demand for resources because of population force and per capita consumption increases. Not so much in Europe and the US, but in places like Asia, Africa, uh, and so on. Now, the reason, one of the reasons is that we have a particular development model of what we think about the system, yeah, the, the system that, that we have has been exported around the world, uh, not least through the Bretton Woods institutions and their, their um, <coughs> uh, control of this process. And as countries develop, um, they become less sustainable. Though you notice on the this, this, the green line is sustainable. Um, uh, uh, limit, biocapacity limit. And there are quite a few countries that are still under that limit. You don't, you don't want to be down here, that's sort of like East Tibur or Palestine occupied territory, that, that's the worst case. Uh, the, the, the ones who use the least resources but also have very low human development in a positive sense. But there's some countries around the center there that are not where the standard of living is not too bad, and yet they're still within the limit. Indonesia is, is one of those places. Now, what is this system that we have? What is this system, and, and what is, it, is its dynamic? And I think, clearly, I mean, what the problems that we now have are a result of the Industrial Revolution, which was driven by science. You, you notice here in the on the left is an industrialist, they're having a conversation with this chief scientist. So, you know, science has been a part of this, the knowledge sector, from the beginning. Industrial revolution, um, mass production, think of Charlie Chaplin's modern times. Um, still, though, there's one deception, is that we think we have this historical build-up of, of a debt, you know, unpaid externalities, but in reality, since Al Gore wrote his first book 30 years ago, in that time, most of the pollution, the CO2 emissions, have happened since then, not before that. So it's really just the last uh, few decades that really have got us into the hockey stick territory. Really. So the hockey stick exponential curve, you know, and some scientists now uh, speak of the hockey stick collection because they're all hockey sticks. Where we have water, water prices, food prices, and it's a collection of hockey sticks. And then we talk like we just did in Belgrade about future education. Here, the policy makers and politicians talk about the future. They seem to think, well, what's the sixth wave? Is it sustainable economics? They're talking about no. They're talking about when they talk about innovation. They talk about uh, industry 4.0, and there's no really good evidence, in fact, rather the contrary, that digital revolution will necessarily lead to less consumption of resources, less environmental damage. So, <clears throat> that's the problem. Why is it so compulsive? I think, you might agree or not agree, but the security is a really major factor. If 
you look uh, at that process, uh, a lot of the you know development after the Second World War was actually driven by the Cold War, by security concerns. The compulsiveness to innovate uh, is in part, at least, uh, you know, the military uh, supremacy. If you don't innovate, you become uh, left, you are left behind. So you, it, it's a major driver. We tend to forget that. And the other factor, of course, is just greed, profit. Okay. Now, the consequences are there are some logistics at CO2. And we need a, a new approach. Really. We can't, more innovation, more industrial revolution. I don't think, I'm very skeptical that this is really going to solve it. It's not about uh, uh, technology, it's about values, it's about aims, it's about justice. <clears throat> Otherwise, well, we just lost in the last 30 years 60% of vertebrate, vertebrates on this planet. 60% in the last 30 years. We are on a dying planet, and that's a fact. Okay. We are in the sixth extinction event, according to <coughs> the people at IFES who I work with. Um, and the rate is extremely high, just like the rate of uh, CO2 increase is extremely high compared to previous mass extinction events, most of which were driven by uh, uh, global warming or climate change. So, very serious. But at the solutions end, the question is, the problem is that we have this complexity barrier. Where do you start? Everyone sees a different part of the elephant, different part of the problem, different part of the solution. How do you get this together? How do you overcome this complexity uh, barrier which has different components <laughs> on its material, on the ecosystem, and its vast complexity? It's only just, we just really only just beginning to understand that say how forests really work, how complex that all is. And socially, because of uh, increasing interconnectivity in, in, the, in the course of human history, and uh, <coughs> the two are interlinked. Okay, let me finish. Integration, what does it mean? Integrated solution to complex problems means integration of scale, um, but also between sectors, and within the knowledge sector, of course, between disciplines. Okay, that's what my, uh, you know. Why I have this sort of concern, and the sort of model I would suggest is, is helpful is what I call sovereign cooperation. That means you preserve difference, but you work together. The problems we've already mentioned. Some of them. Um, this one is an interesting. This one is a really interesting. We run 674 billion uh, per annum are invested still in fossil fuels. Uh, that's nearly 2 billion a day. What could the World Academy do? It was 2 billion. Just one day's investment in the fossil fuel sector. And um, yes, the uh, derivatives, this is of the financial sector uh, problems. And the shortfalls, you know, the money is not where it's supposed to be, where it's needed. And then you have 693, 93 trillion in derivatives. What for? You know, what for? And 40 to 90 billion annual shortfall in clean energy research and development. It's only a fraction of the derivatives market. So we have to ask ourselves. Why isn't it changing? Well, Wall Street is now discussing climate change. <laughs> but uh, I think they need our input. I think there's a lot of uh, um, a growing goodwill or growing, growing realization that our survival is indeed at stake. And uh, certainly that of our children, uh, grandchildren. Well, that climate change will be the number one determinant of their life. No question about that. We are talking now, 40 degrees by the end of the century, that's the IPCC gold standard estimate. Uh, many scientists are now saying we could have 40 degrees by 2050. That's catastrophic. 
that sounds like, oh, well, if you live in a cold country, four degrees is not much, but that's totally devastating. Um, the last time that happened, we got like, feedback loops with methane. We had uh, global heating and 95% uh, of species uh, were wiped out 225 million years ago. Uh, and I always remind people the 5% or five percent that survived, no, they were not humans or anything like them, they were single cell organisms. So unless you're a single cell organism, this is really bad news. Okay, that's all, really.